Hi, it's James and today we're going to be looking at how we can make the touch bar on the MacBook Pro laptops more useful. So I've seen a load of comments online about how the touch bar is useless and how it will never ever be useful. Well then hopefully this video will change your mind. So let's jump straight in. So to help make the touch bar more useful, we're going to be using an external app called Better Touch Tools. But before we get into that app, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that don't require any external apps to be installed. If you want to jump to the section of the video where we use the external app, I will leave a timestamp here. Okay, so now on with the tips and tricks part of this video. So most people think that to turn the brightness down, you have to touch the brightness icon, then swipe. However, this is not the case. What you can do is if you swipe directly from that icon, this will adjust the brightness. You don't have to click then swipe, you could do it all within one motion. This also applies for the volume. Moving on to the next tip, you actually have the ability to customise what the touch bar shows you in applications. So let's say you're in an application like Safari, you can actually change what it's showing on the touch bar. This trick about changing what the touch bar shows you will apply for most apps. But one thing that people think is that the touch bar has removed the function keys. Yes, the touch bar has removed the physical function keys, but that doesn't mean that you can't use the function keys anymore. To actually access the function keys, you can hold down the FN button and this will cause the touch bar to show all the function keys. Pretty cool, right? Another feature of the touch bar that is pretty underrated and not really looked at is the autocomplete for words. I'm very much a big fan of this, especially when typing out long pieces of text. I just find it pretty useful in general. I have however seen comments online from people saying that they just never use this. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this, about whether you use it, whether you just think it's a waste of space. So yeah, please let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear. But now moving off the tips and tricks and into the app. This is where we can really make the touch bar useful and can customise it dramatically. So let's now dive into the computer so we can look at this app. So the third party app that we're going to be using to make the touch bar more useful is called Better Touch Tools. You can download it from this website. I will leave a link for it in the description. It, you get a 45 day free trial of it, however then you have to pay a license fee for it. However it's extremely cheap, I think it's £8 for two years, which is really good, or you could buy like a lifetime one for £18 or £20 I think. But with this third party tool we can greatly increase how useful the touch bar is. So when you install Better Touch Tools and you load up the window, it will look something like this. And so you want to go ahead and open up the touch bar section of this app, as this app does many other things as well as the touch bar. So to open up the touch bar section, just come to the top bit here, click on it and then select touch bar. And you have a screen similar to this. This screen is where you customise the touch bar and how we can make it a lot more useful. So let's just go ahead and do something to make this touch bar a bit more useful to start off with. So if we click on the plus, we can see that it's asking us to select a trigger. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go click on the drop down for the widgets. And you can see here we've got loads of widget options for us to choose from. Let's choose the dock widget. So if we click on this, you'll see that it's created a dock widget here. And essentially what this dock widget does is it displays the dock on the touch bar. So this immediately makes the touch bar a lot more useful as it allows you to select apps from there. But what else we can do is we can essentially completely customise this. There's no limitations. So we can set the widget width. So how wide this touch bar section will be. So let's say we just increase it to 400, then it would go wider and so on and forth. So you can actually customise this to suit it to be what you want it to look like. But there's also loads of other options you can choose from. So if we go back to that widget section, you can see there's loads and loads more of different widgets you can choose from. So let's just say I choose the remaining battery time widget. And so this again shows the um, battery in the touch bar. 
as well makes the touch bar a lot more useful as without this tool you cannot see the battery in the touch bar and personally I like this feature as you if you let's say you're in a full screen application like a video editing software or a photo editing software what you can do is just look down at the touch bar to see how much battery is left you can also set the battery to show a percentage show remaining time or like hide when charging and just the limitations are endless with this software but let's say you didn't like any of these widgets um, here. So what you can actually do is you can create your own sort of widget. So you could, I don't know, uh, on a button press, you wanted to do something. So let's say we had a button here with, I don't know, let's say hello on it. And when you clicked this hello button on the touch bar, it caused it to run a script, for example. So let's say you were to create a Python script or a JavaScript script and you were to set it up so it ran every time you clicked this button. That could be something you wanted to do. But then there's also the gestures section of the touch tool. So let's say you did like a four finger swipe left. That could be something. So that was similar to the tip of where like adjusting the brightness that I mentioned earlier on in this video. And it applies here. So as I said before, it's the same thing again. You can set it up to do whatever you wanted to do. So it's like programming. You have like a trigger and then an action. So like let's say the trigger is like a two finger swipe left. And then when you do that, it will do a certain action. But as I was saying before, the limits to this are endless. But instead of me just going through and showing you what's in the list, I feel like it's better that if you just have it go yourself and just play around. But before I go, there's one thing that I've seen online is that people have actually created like a, a YouTube subscriber account on their touch bar in like the corner, which is a very cool feature, which I like. But as you can see here, using this software, you can make the touch bar a lot more useful, more useful than it is without these, without this external tool. Well, this brings us to the end of this episode. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do consider giving it a like. And while you're down there, if you're new, please do consider subscribing. It would mean a lot. I've enjoyed hanging out with you today. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.